And it's, you know, I, I could have come on and just glazed over the running back thing. There's not that much to say about it as my wires are creaking out from all sorts of corners. Um, but I, we do we should dig into a little bit of what's going on with the running back position right now. So Austin Eckler, one of our first guests ever on the show, he's a leader. He's very confident. He has a lot to say. He's a, a defender of all things. Uh, and he decided to put together a bit of a Zoom call over the weekend or before the weekend with uh, some really big time, big name running backs to talk about the discrepancy and what's gone on and has developed between running backs and other positions in the National Football League as it were. So I think we can all agree that it is not the most fun to be a running back, comparatively speaking, to some other positions in the NFL. This has been going on for a long time. Their careers are shorter. They take by far the most wear and tear on the body, and now the compensation isn't there and matching either. Nick Chubb said over the weekend, quote, there's really nothing running backs can do right now. So the fact of the matter is that sort of sums it up. And Saquon Barkley's it is what it is tweet that he sent last week. It's a bummer, but he's right. The market has spoken. And I'm always for the player. And I'm always for the players getting taken care of. And it sounds like this guy, Saquon Barkley, and another guy who was on our show at the Super Bowl named Josh Jacobs, who won some hardware for his incredible productivity on the field, they're flirting with the idea, reportedly, of holding out instead of playing on what would be a 10 mil-ish franchise tag. But here's the thing, nothing is going to change between now and next off season, at the very least, regardless, right? The CBA is what it is. So I personally want them to play. I hope they play. I'm not telling them what to do. I'm not telling, we, and I'm saying that because we cannot solve this problem today. You know, if I'm talking to them, it's, it's what's in your best interest? What's to gain by holding out? You'll lose money. Whose playbook are we following? Who is this worked out for? How does it go? I want the players to get taken care of. I always will. But this is where this stands sort of at this moment. And they can put themselves in the best position. That's sort of all they can do, make the most that they can. And yes, hopefully, eventually work to resolve this issue and make things better. Maybe not for this group of running backs, but certainly for future generations at the RB spot through the CBA, through getting sort of creative. Now, because where it is, G these GMs guys and these evaluators, the case is easy to make for them. You know, the Patriots, the Chiefs, the Eagles, the Niners, over and over again, proving that the investment in the running back spot isn't exactly needed, according to them, of course, in, in order to contend, right? The value you find in the position late in the draft, which is filled with the Isaiah Pachecos, who was a seventh round pick, even Austin Eckler himself, who is making himself sort of the, the union spokesman uh, informally here. He's an undrafted guy, him being an undrafted guy, helps these GMs making this case. It hurts the case that, you know, of these veteran running backs that want to get paid. So does seeing things like Derrick Henry get these huge dollars and then the Titans have to give up A.J. Brown and the Titans sort of flounder and fall off as a result. There's a lot to point to for these GMs and the solution isn't coming now because it doesn't have to come now. So um, until then, all, all ideas are on the table. First thing I thought when I saw this go on, this isn't, this isn't new, by the way. This is because, you know, six players who were tagged, three of them were running backs, and those were the three that did not get long-term deals done. The non-running the non back positions went and got things done with their respective teams. And, and I would say this, if these players do show up, if the Saquons and Josh Jacobs come in, it is impossible to feel completely valued by your team, right? Whether it's the coach, whether it's what treat them really well, treat them really respectfully. That's what I would ask on the other side, because at this point we just had to sort of get through this year. And then you look at other ideas, you know, short, shorter contracts. These, it all comes down to this rookie deal. There needs to be this sort of tweak to the current contract system. And maybe it's, you know, incentive laden, maybe, you know, incentives that don't count against the cap or something because everything they do will hurt other players. Mike Florio wrote a brilliant piece with Pro Football Talk over the weekend about it, how helping the running backs or making things better takes away from other positions. How do you work that out? It's the market that is speaking. You could shorten contract lengths. I'm a big fan of that. Three years, maybe an option for a fourth, we'll see. Um, but mostly something that will allow flexibility in negotiation so that running backs can make the most 
of their prime years, which for the vast majority of them, which is sort of unique to the position, is their first three seasons. And this all started this like mega drama. It wasn't this year, right? This, we got big marquee players who haven't come to terms, and that's why this is a hot topic. But, you know, Sam Bradford, the darling, the last rookie who got that mega deal, and then everything changed. This was 2011, right? Rookies before then could get paid whatever they wanted. And if you look at the last top 10 running back, Hamilton, of course, found this for me yesterday. The last top 10 running back drafted under the old Sam Bradfordy CBA, pre Sammy B, it's CJ Spiller. And look at how his contract stacks up against Bijan Robinson this year draft pick. Okay, Spiller was taken ninth overall back in 2010. Bijan was eighth this year to the Falcons, my sleeper team for the season. Uh, they're essentially getting the same money per year. And Bijan's is fully guaranteed, but look at the last number. The salary cap, guys has pretty much doubled. It's pretty much 2X since 2010. So if we're speaking relatively, I get why they're so upset. You, you know, we have to account for cap inflation here. Bijan is making about double, or Bijan's making half of what CJ Spiller was uh, before being as high of a draft pick. So there has to be a way to get these stars a chance to earn more out the gates and not backload things a la Alvin Kamara, Lovey Mickey Loomis, but that's just what it is in this business. So I do hope they find a way to get them that money. Um, I just hope they're treated well and respectfully by the teams and everyone sort of realizes it probably isn't anyone's fault and it's more the faults of an ever evolving game that's changing where tight ends used to not get paid and now they are getting paid more and the game's evolving and the market is just reflective of that. And I hope that's okay to say. And I'd like your thoughts. And I, of course, want the running backs to all do their thing. Naim Hines today, I found out, out for the year. I'm walking onto my set at home here. Awful.